everyone and welcome back to another anatomy tutorial where we are going to be talking about the small and large intestine of the horse. Here after we open the abdomen through the linea alba the first structure we can see is the cecum. The cecum is divided into this is the apex cecum, the body, this is the body here and dorsally there we can see the head of the cecum. As you know, the cecum has four tenia. Between the lateral tenia and the right ventral colon, we have this fold, the cecocolic fold. From the dorsal tenia, between the cecum and the ilium, we have the iliocecal fold, which you can see here. After the cecum, the next section is the ascending colon. Uh, which starts on the right side to form the right ventral colon on the sternum here we have the sternal flexure moves to the left side to form the left ventral colon here caudally inside the pelvis it forms the pelvic flexure here this part is the left dorsal colon on the diaphragm here it forms the the diaphragmatic flexor moves to the right side to form finally the right dorsal colon or ambola coli. Now we will try to find the three sections of the small intestine of the horse. This is all jejunum, jejunum. This is the descending colon. Okay, let's move there. Here again, this is the ilium. How to find the ilium? Just look for the iliocecal fold between the ilium and cecum, this one here. The end of this fold represents the border between the ilium and jejunum. Now we will move to the right side to find the duodenum. What we can see here from the bilorus is the descending duodenum. Caudally here, we can. this is the descending duodenum. Caudally, we can see the caudal flexor and the ascending duodenum. Now let's move and find the stomach. The stomach here is located inside the interthoracic part of the abdominal cavity. It has the fundus, this area here, the body, and the pylorus, identified by the very strong pyloric sphincter muscle. This is here the cranial flexor of the duodenum. The greater omentum is relatively short as you can see here comparing to that one of the carnivores for example. And here I would like to show you the place of the epiploic foramen. The epiploic foramen is formed or this foramen between the caudal vena cava and the portal vein. So to be able to find it, please go ahead and find these two veins. The caudal vena cava is there dorsally. And if you put your finger here inside the epiploic foramen, you will go directly to the lesser omentum. Let's look there. This is the portal vein here, and this is the epiploic foramen here. The epiploic foramen is clinically important in the horse, where small intestine can go through this foramen and cause what's called colic. The head of the cecum adheres to the dorsal wall of the abdominal cavity, and in the adhesion area we can find the pancreas, the portal vein, and the ventral surface of the right kidney, this one here. And here we can see how the head of the cecum adheres to the dorsal wall of the abdominal cavity. As well, we can see some connective tissue between the head of the cecum and the duodenum in this area here. And here it's important to mention that the head of the cecum uh, in the horse is located dorsally inside the abdominal cavity on the right side. The same location, for example, like the duodenum, and that helps the cecum, this huge structure in the equine, to be fixed to the dorsal abdominal wall. And um, that's why we can see this connective tissue here. This is the duodenum, and this is the ascending duodenum here. 
And now we are looking for the connection between the ascending duodenum and the descending colon. There is a plica or there is a fold between them. This one here. So this is the ascending duodenum. And this is the descending colon. And this is the fold. Connect them together. The duodenocolic fold or the plica duodenocolica. The small and large intestine are supplied by the cranial mesenteric artery and caudal mesenteric artery. Uh, to be able to remove them, we have to close this artery and the portal vein, of course. As you can see here, we can see a lot of small arteries. They are branches from the cranial mesenteric artery. This is the jejunal arteries, and this is the iliocolic artery, big branch from the cranial mesenteric artery. So we have to close all of them, including also the portal vein. And after that, we can remove the small and large intestine. Here and after, we remove the intestine out of the abdominal cavity. We are going to describe the different divisions of the intestine, starting with the ascending column, which makes like a W-shaped structure, divided into uh, the dorsal colon. This is the dorsal colon this one here and this is the ventral colon uh, here after the pelvic flexor we can see the left dorsal colon which has one uh, tenia or, or muscular band which is the mesocolic tenia after this uh, part another two tenia will be developed as you can see here to uh, make a very strong muscular band on the right dorsal colon here this is the base of the sacrum and this is the adhesion area to the dorsal abdominal wall here in this area we can see some branches arteries from the cranial mesenteric artery including the iliocolic artery this big one here there are some lymph nodes, as you can see in this area also, the cranial mesenteric lymph nodes. This is the middle. This is the middle colic artery. Mm -hmm. Here we can see the apex of the uh, cecum, which is normally located on the xaphoid process of the sternum. And after the ambula coli, the next section here is the transverse colon, moves to the from the right to the left side, up to the descending colon, which has normally in the horse very long mesentery, as you can see here. The rest, with, which we can see here, are all, you know, jejunum. Uh, the mesentery of the jejunum is also very long and this is the plica between the ilium and the sacrum the iliocecal fold the ilium enter the sacrum and uh, form the iliocecal bulb Let's talk now about the blood supply of the intestine. These branches come from the cranial mesenteric artery. This one is the right colic artery, responsible to supply the right dorsal colon, the diaphragmatic flexor, the left dorsal colon. This artery anastomoses with the colic branch this one here for the ventral colon and here we can see the iliocolic artery it's a branch from the cranial mesenteric artery this one here this is the middle colic artery another branch from the cranial mesenteric artery this is the mesenteric ileal artery responsible to supply the ileum comes from the iliocolic artery And here in this area, we can also see some lymph nodes 
they are the Korean and Byzantine Kingdom of Notes.